all of us have experienced some kind of trauma. Yes, every single one of us have experienced some kind of trauma. And one um, thing I wanted to comment on is a lot of people try to um, look at other people's trauma and compare it to theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the We Talk Show, where everything that we discuss is a bit provocative and um, engages our community in a discussion that um, we shy away from and um, the topics that we discuss here are in topics that impact our community as a whole. And so today I bring to you guys a topic dear to my heart uh, and that I've been like um, studying quite a while now. And this is intergenerational trauma or just generational trauma. And you may be wondering like, what is that? You know, it's trauma that isn't just experienced by um, one person but it extends or transmits to the next generation um, of people that comes after you. And so today we'll be discussing this with a beautiful, beautiful Willie. And if she can just like introduce herself, tell us her name, her full name, where, well, you don't have to tell us your full name, <laughs> like where you're from and what you do um, and anything you'd like to share that's interesting about you. Okay. Um, hello everyone, my name is Willie. I was born in Liberia, West Africa, um, but grew up kind of in the United States. Um, right now, I work as a clinical care coordinator at Iowa at Central Iowa Trauma Recovery Center, and so um, I help uh, survivors of crime um, and trauma doing the most. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? English. <laughs> Not our first language is okay. <laughs> But just doing the most sensitive time of their life um, to be there and be that support for them. Um, it's something that I really, really enjoy doing, but it gives me a sense of um, appreciation um, and purpose. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I would have never thought that would have been your rile. At all, at all. You know, this is actually my first time stepping into the social services world. I, mm -hmm. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to be a doctor, and I'm still on that path. Um, but something that really um, affects my path is while I'm becoming a doctor, I want to experience all types of people. I like to put myself in different situations. Um, I'm really trying to limit the bias that a lot of medical professionals have. And so I never want to go into a situation where, you know, I, I have a patient that I haven't, you know, encountered before. I've never come to any one of that you know, of that race or anyone of that religion, that background. So I really try to um, open myself up to almost anyone that I meet and everyone that I meet. Just, you can learn something from everyone. You can oh, yeah. Stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I like to learn, every, like, something new from everyone. That I meet. Yeah. And so um, just being exposed um, to all of these different people, all of these different paths, um, you know, nursing home, mental health facility, um, I've worked with, you know, just people with various different mental um, capabilities and abilities. So, yeah. I, I no, that's, I'm, I'm really happy for you. Um, you guys, Lily and I went to high school together and it's been a long, long time. And so it's so exciting to like have Lily here and to kind of see her as an adult because we don't really interact that much. And so it'll be interesting to like have this conversation and see how much she's grown and how much I've grown. Yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. But okay, so I said today we're talking about trauma, um, about generational, intergenerational trauma. And I want to ask you, do you think that Africans realize that they're dealing with trauma? I, I don't think that a lot of um, Africans, I don't even think that crosses the line sometimes. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the times, and I see this with like the older generation too, I don't think they realize that they're dealing with trauma and some of their, their different tactics or the way they act. For example, you know, my grandma, <laughs> coming from a war-torn country, coming to the United States, she keeps a lot of stuff. You give her food, she'll have food in the fridge for a week. Oh and stuff. Gosh. And you know, I think that's trauma from being in a survival mode, almost thinking like, I'm going to run out, I'm going to run out. It's like, she's just, she's just like, portrays that in various different ways where I'm just like, it's okay, you know, like they don't, 
they don't um have the opportunity to you know just to live but more is just survival. survival it's like i don't think she got out of maybe that mold that survival yeah. mode that yeah and when we say like i just want to clarify that when we say african the african experience is vast like it's not one particular thing and there are people who have lived throughout like war there are people who've lived through um you know famine there's people who've lived just all kinds of things and trauma is any experience where you were scared like you were scared out of your mind you felt like i cannot do this right now it was sensitive in your spirit it crushed who you are as a person and so that could be anything it could be a storm that you experience it could be um i don't know like it could be the days that your mother wasn't around negligence could be a trauma so there's so many variations of trauma that it doesn't just it's not just one thing and people think it has to be this crazy big thing yes and it really doesn't it's have not. to be. And so like I feel to some like to some extent, all of us have experienced some kind of trauma. Yes. Every single one of us have experienced some kind of trauma. And one um thing I wanted to comment on is a lot of people try to um look at other people's trauma and compare it to theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same because for example, a snake could be laying here and you know how I react to it could be totally different. Than Oh, most it. definitely. Something that might be traumatic to me may not be traumatic to, to someone you. else. Yeah. So you can't, who are you to tell someone, you know, your trauma yeah. isn't that big. Your trauma doesn't matter. You know, why Why is this thing such a bad thing for you? And I, a trigger. I love that you say that because I feel like as Africans or in the communities that I've been a part of, we undermine each other's trauma so much um, that like, a kid could be going, the pandemic could have like affected a child in a different way than it affected you. And when a, the kid is telling you like, I'm going through some things right now, I'm going to tell them like, oh, what have you gone through? This pandemic, what was it? We still had food, we still had this. That's when we, <laughs> when we, we went through, you know, the war and we didn't have food, we didn't have this, we didn't have that, we didn't have that. So like, we try to like undermine each other's trauma and like, the experiences that we're going through. And so like the very definition of intergeneration, intergenerational trauma says that it's trauma that extends from one person, one generation to the next. How does that happen? Um, a lot of times just from proximity, being in the same home, people don't understand that, you know, your, your home or your environment really set the precedent for you're going to be or they don't really realize that um what is going on or how their childhood really impacts them into adulthood um if you live in a household you know where your parents just quick to anger always yelling all of that that can be passed on yeah. to you that you mm -hmm. know that those are stuff that are outside of your genetics that <laughs> outside of genetics that can still affect you that mm -hmm. they don't really understand mm -hmm. um i was listening to this podcast Mm -hmm, that's or the show, the TED Talk show, and you know the lady um, was kind of, she was speaking on how um, the I think the first year of a child's life really um, plays yeah most important and plays a role in um, having that uh, bond and that connection to another human is what really helps um, move mold a child to grow into how they're gonna be. So like if there's that disconnect that's there from the beginning. That can like start, a trauma can start as early as that. And people, yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't recognize that. Oh, they're kids, yeah. they're not gonna remember, they're kids. Yeah, not, but. and I've, I've been reading on it and trauma actually can be passed through gene genetics. So like if trauma doesn't get healed, for example, let's say that I um, experienced trauma when I was younger, my father passed away, right? And that impacted my life so much that you know i've had to go to therapy numerous times like i've had like different times in my life where like i was constantly in um in therapy 
And I thought, the first time I thought I healed, I was fine. And then, you know, something triggered it and I went back into um, panic mode. But now if I don't heal from this completely and I have children, my, like my trauma changes my DNA. And then my DNA now passes on to my kids and my kids have depressive mood moods. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have those during, you know, like my dad's memorial um, and like well, his, time his anniversary. Every time it's like, you know, I get into this depressive mode and I realize that. And so I'm getting the help that I need. But I feel like if if I don't work on it right now, I'm gonna be able to pass that on to my kids. And so like studies are showing that, and it, this is very recent study because intergenerational trauma hasn't really been looked into. And um, for Africans particularly, we had to deal with colonialism and our ancestors didn't realize that them not healing from that passed that down to us, you know? And so like, we're dealing with like colonialism, African Americans are dealing with slavery and all of those things. And people like to say, oh, don't bring up slavery. And it's like, well, I can't not not bring it up. Like it's part of who I am. Like our people struggled. So like, yeah, yeah. So in a way, there's so many things that have happened to us as a collective that like our people haven't found time to like sit down and ask themselves like, why am I this way? Why do I act this way? Why do I behave this way? And all of that. So yeah, um, are there any other ways you feel like it could be translated to the next generation? Is it just like nature versus nur nurture type of thing? No, definitely like you said in the DNA and all of that stuff can be uh, transferred to people like you know, temperament, all of that. Um, I know that uh, the TED talk I was listening to, um, uh, the lady was saying that they started looking into epigenetics and oh, finding yeah. that's how they're starting to trace now um, about how you've seen the trauma being transferred uh, from one generation onto the next the generation. Next. Um, she said that, you know, such as me, she was working in a, um, like a social environment, you know, where it's healthy people. She wanted to help families, but kept getting into these situations of, you know, same situation of kids happening, kids going through the same thing or yeah. like, you know, getting into trouble doing this. And so she wanted to stop and, you know, not help, but find out the reason why. why. Like I said, with epigenetics, how it basically looks at um, your expression of your gene. And so that comes into play as in, if you're in an environment where your parents are always arguing or fighting um, in order to solve an issue, that's how you will um, respond in your communication, in your relationships. Um, it's the same way that they do. Most of the times we don't recognize that until like we're way older. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important, that's why it's important to always have self-reflection. You know, why am I acting the way I am acting? You know, why is this yeah. triggering to me? Why am I upset by this world? Why um, is this happening? It's important to recognize that so that you can recognize when you are going through stuff when you need um, to take time to heal because uh, that's the and I think that's a really big thing in the African community that like our parents our parents were a lot of our parents were raised out of um, survival mood and like I said colonial um, colonialization really did a number on us and so because of the trauma that our ancestors faced our great-grandparents took that on and our grandparents then took it on and now our parents are taking it on and they're just leaving on um, out of this mentality of like, I just need to survive. And our parents think that like, giving you the necessities is all you need. Like you just need food, you need a roof over your head and you need clothes. But it's like, no, I don't just need that. I also need you as my mother to reflect on yourself and how you behave and how you parent and how you treat us as children. Um, so that way, like I can then grow up and be able to um, reflect those same behaviors. And like you said, it takes you into 
it takes you up until the time that you start to like look back into your life and reflect on like your experiences to get to a place to get to a place where you feel like oh this is why I behave like this and I'll I've seen um I don't know if it was TED Talk yeah I think it was a TED Talk where they were talking about like if if you don't work on your trauma your trauma will deal with you and so if you don't transform that trauma into something beautiful that trauma will transfer to your children. And so as parents, as young adults, we really do have to like look at um, our behaviors and ask ourselves like, why do I act in that manner? Mm -hmm. Why do I respond to certain things the way I respond to them? Because if you're not having those self-reflections, my dear, there are so many things that you're going to bundle up and pass it on to your children. And it is going to harm them. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's deal with our traumas. Um, I want to ask really, like, is there is there a specific event that has happened in your life that was traumatic to an extent that you've now felt, or like maybe today is the day to for you to like be like, oh my gosh, I need to like look back on that. Is there something that you've had in your life that has um, put you in? an uncomfortable situation. I don't know. I uh-huh. have to like worry that. Uh, uncomfortable situations. Uh, most of my traumas that I've uh, encountered in life have been more related to like sexual trauma, which is also something that just passed down from generation to generation as well. Um, from not, you know, sufficient education um, so, or shame, you know, not being able to talk about it or being able to confront that. Because um, I remember, you know, confronting my mom one about you know some of the, my sexual trauma and being sexually molested sexually abused or whatnot and you know she kind of just brought up oh it happened to me too and you know for me that's kind of saying you know if that happened to you too then you should have learned you know to like handle it better and you see that's where it comes to the part of where she, it was probably a part of her life that she probably blocked out or didn't deal with or anything and so then it just transferred on to us and I'm where the generation stops, you know, because um, it's important to like educate kids. I know a lot of times, a lot of times, um, mostly in our African communities, we think like ignorance is key, but it's it's not because it just perpetuates the behavior. Because when I was being sexually abused, sexually molested, I did not know that those things were happening to me. Happening to me, I did not know that you know that's what was happening until like i'm older now and i'm sitting and i'm like wait you know i'm dealing with people who are in trauma and um coming across similar situations that happened to me and they're having you know i'm having mental health issues i'm having this i'm having that and i'm sitting here recognizing wait that happened to me too too yeah so (laughs) you know i didn't even know it at the time time. i didn't know it because it was never a discussion Yes, and then um, once, you know, recently, just sitting down and just, it's funny how you don't see how everything connects <laughs> until, like, sometimes when you're older. I do a lot of self-reflection, and because I do a lot of self-reflection, I just, I just start I see to the connections. Okay, I do this because of this. Oh, but that's related to this one. I have a, I have a two-year-old, and, you know, um, my mom has always just been a screamer. She just, I feel like, you know, just the patience is, like, Really low. Cool. So it's like um I remember, you know, talking to her about it before, um, being as an older sister and now with my little sister. That's just the way I am. I'm just I scream all the time. And, you know, I I realized that I had low patience from with, somewhere with my daughter. Yeah. And so I had to like sit back and be like, wait, why am I so why am I like quick to just yell or do this? And you know, I have to recognize and meeting kids where they are. Yeah. She's two years old. She's going to get into stuff. Like, that's her behavior. It's going to happen. It's okay. Allow her to do that. And I feel like as a child, I wasn't allowed that, yeah. you know, to that space to just be a child and just to grow, to make mistakes and all of that. And so I could see that behavior perpetuating. But because, you know, I I kind of reflect, I have to sit and say that I didn't like it when that happened to me. To me. So, so I, I don't I want it to happen to my daughter. Or my daughter. I, I like that you point that out because um, I was also thinking like prior to this that the reason why a lot of kids live behind their cultures um, 
is because of what their cultures make them feel, right? If you have um, a mother that you've come to, or like um, a grandmother, or a trusted adult in the community that you've come to, and like told them like this this traumatic event happened to me, and then they look at it and they say, "Oh well, it happened to me too." In a way, it has to like silence you. Like it happens. That's what, that. It, that's life. Mm -hmm. And so, like, then it makes you think like I don't want to associate myself with that. And so, I no longer want to be part of this community. I no longer want to be part of this um, toxicity. And so, you see a lot of kids like the disconnection begins to happen. And that's a that's a that um that's a symptom of generational trauma. That's a sy symptom of that transmission. You have passed it on to your kids. And now your kids no longer want to associate with you, no longer want to associate with your beliefs, you know, with your religion. They no longer want to associate with your culture because your culture brings too much pain onto them. And so they just want to be done. And I, yeah, I think it's so important for us to like recognize that kids aren't just like saying, you know what, I'm done. Peace out. Yeah, and a lot of parents, you know, kids grow up and then they move out or they go to college and they don't come. Right. What happened? You know? Well, that's what happened. <laughs> Why you yeah, transmitted like, something that your kid didn't want anything to do with, and now they're having to deal with it, and the way they stop it is to stay, away. is to stay away. And so, saying sorry is a very important thing. It's so humbling when your child can come to you and like let you know you know you did something wrong, and not to just dismiss it, but to sit with that and to realize. You know what? Maybe I was wrong. And to go back and to apologize, yeah, it's very humbling, but it's also satisfactory. You know, to, to make that step to move forward, um, to not just see your child as a lot of people just children should be seen or um not heard or most they don't treat them as people with individual respect to each other. It's just like get out of here. Don't do this. Don't do that. And my thing, I try really to do is let my daughter have a voice you know like she's too because i don't want to do this visual. i don't want to wear this and, like, okay. and i'm not saying i say yes to, to everything, everything but there are some things if she doesn't want to wear this shoe and wants to wear another shoe that's not going to hurt her right, right. so i'm no i'm ready to let her. i definitely <laughs> agree i definitely agree i think that also like how we heal as individuals comes from a place of like recognizing what's happening like we said, a lot of reflection is going to help you. If you are a parent watching this, please sit down for just like, even if it's five minutes, and ask yourself, why do I behave the way I behave towards my kid? If you're a sister or a brother, same thing. Why do I respond the way I respond? Because at the end of the day, you do not want your child to deal with your mess. It is your mess. Deal with it so that your kid doesn't have to deal with it. And if you do transfer that trauma, you are also responsible for being able to recognize it and telling your kid that this happened to me, that's why this is happening to you. And like, yeah, I just think this is a conversation that really could go on longer than this, but we don't have time. We don't have time today. But I will definitely bring on more people to like continue on this, um, this discussion. I feel like the next step is to like have like experiences, people who have dealt with parents who are dealing with trauma and that they just haven't recognized it or they haven't like, ah, oh, they haven't wanted to deal with it. Even if they recognize it, it's like, people are scared. Yeah, they're, scared. they're just scared to like discuss it. So I'm a, I, I will really, really, try my best to do that to bring these people on to have this conversation because i think it's so important the world is such a mess today because of the many traumatic events that has happened to so many people and i keep thinking of like the shooting that happened in texas what's going to happen to those little kids that watch their friends get killed so yeah anyways you guys thank you so much for tuning in y'all know i have more coming for but before we leave here, Willie, go ahead and tell people where they can find you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Wilmetta, and um, we'll have that written down under the video for you guys. 
Um, but that's where I'm most active at the moment. And so that's where I'm most active. Um, and also, if you are um, an individual 18 years or older dealing with any um, kind of a traumatic event or have been a survivor of a crime, um, uh, Central Iowa Trauma Recovery Center is um, available. We have free mental health services and clinical care mitigation services uh, that we offer. And so you can go on our website and self refer. All right. Well, you guys heard it from her. If you're struggling, please get the help you deserve. You are, you matter so much. You matter so, so, so much. You are so important to this world. And so stick it out. All right. Thank you so much. Go ahead, subscribe, like, share, and you know, do all the rest of those things, y'all. <laughs> Love y'all so much.